Taking a quick break from my crazy mix and mastering schedule to test the iKey Multimedia iLoud Precision 6 and the X Monitor software. I was casually chatting at the past NAM here in LA with my friend Tom Lord Algi, and he owns a pair of one of the models in the line and he was very impressed, so I'm expecting a lot. But one thing for sure, they come packed with features between the X Monitor software, the ARC microphone for calibration, in this video, I'm gonna go through the entire process with you guys. I already installed them, hooked them up. We're gonna do the calibration and take a look at the software. And of course, I'll tell you what I think on how they sound. Let's go. First thing first, let's take a look at the specs on paper for the Allowed Precision 6. We have a 6.5 inches ultralight coated paper low distortion midwoofer, a 1.5 inches high output low distortion chamber textile dom tweeter, and this monitor is powered by an audiophile custom designed proprietary class D power amplifier for a total of 150 watts RMS. The frequency response goes as low as 45 hertz up to 30k with a plus and minus 1 dB that's pretty impressive for this small of a monitor. Rear ported monitors with what they call a high performance vented design, a built-in arc room calibration with X monitor technology and remote control software. On the back panel we have the rear port at the top and the control panel. With low frequency extensions this is your high pass filter full 50 hertz or 80 hertz, low frequency control plus and minus or flat same for the high frequency control and then the calibration slash preset button this has a two function button you hold it to initiate the calibration process or you select one of the two presets desk or flat auto standby button level knob usb port to connect it to your computer and use the remote x monitor software the combo quarter inch jack xlr for the audio input and the arc mic input for the calibration those were the specs of course as you can see i've already installed them i've already turned them on and took a quick listen and i gotta be honest my first impression was like holy cow the low end on these things even without calibration or nothing is pretty impressive so i'm really curious we'll start the process from scratch the monitors come with the arc microphone this is the microphone that you use to calibrate the monitors in your room one thing that i really like as opposed to other system is that this microphone plugs directly into the monitors so as you can see i'm running a cable right there on the side i've already plugged the cable to my left monitor we're going to plug the microphone in and i'm going to quickly guide you to the calibration process but also this software has emulations of various speakers already and I'm very curious to hear how that works as well. So let's start. We're gonna plug the microphone in, and of course I'm gonna put it on a stand. I'm using, let me see if I can show you a Mogami cable for this mic. We take a look at the screen, the X monitor software interface, as you can see. And of course I already plugged in the USB ports on the back of the speakers to my computer. Now that's a little bit of a drawback because you have to use two extra USB ports on your computer. And if you are like me and you have a lot of USB peripheral, they kind of add up. But it's a necessary evil if you wanna use the X monitor and all the functions that are on it. With the USB plugged in, you can see that it already recognizes the iLoud Precision 6.5 five and the other monitor for the other speaker at this point we can start the calibration pressing the calibration button here and all you have to do is to follow the instructions 
that appear on your screen. The software will tell you to connect the ARC monitors. We already did that and position the microphone. You can see the picture here. So I'm gonna grab the microphone right here and position it right where my ears are. To avoid this cable to pull and move the mic, I'm gonna use paper tape so the cable won't pull the mic. And I think for the purpose of this demonstration, this is gonna be good enough. Room analysis. Follow the points as indicated in the image. The mic position may be approximate. Click on capture point to start when the capture is complete, the upward point will start flashing. And you can see here on the right of the screen, we have four points, basically where your elbows are and then when your shoulders are. So we start with the left front. I have to move the mic right now. So this appeared to be a good spot and let's capture point. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to stay here or move. As for the level, I didn't see anything telling me what level I should capture. Now this room has been designed and tuned around my main speakers. And I have a preset level here on my monitor controller uh, for all my pairs, so mains, mids, and near. Now, I don't know if the sensitivity of these is gonna be the same as the ones that I had before, but they are a Unity game, so I'm just gonna use the preset level that I have here and hope the best. Capture point, let's go. Great work, point one done. So let's move to the other point. All points are done. So I think we're gonna do the same for the other speakers and then we'll be back here. Before we continue, if you like the channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you like the video, consider using the super thanks and support the channel. But if you really wanna learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button down here, become a Mixplus TV member, access the exclusive content mix and mastering courses start to finish on many different genres and a lot more and many new courses are coming your way let's go back to the video but regardless how linear or not linear your uh, end result looks like in this video i'm gonna tell you honestly what i think about the software correction because generally speaking i've never been a fan of software correction so in this video i'm gonna give it a shot just play a couple of songs that i know without the correction with the correction and tell you uh, my honest opinion on how well does it work. But regardless, that a system is also a matter of personal taste and how we mix engineers, every single individual mix engineer, hear things. So you have also the contour function, which allows you to further shape what you hear coming from the speakers, because at the end of the day, that's all it matters. And you can see there are several presets, basically the controls that you have on the back that now you can control remotely through the X monitor software. And in fact, it gives you here the position LF minus uh, 120, desk minus 182. You can see we have large former console, desk wall, gentle lift, and so on. And you can, of course, change this and adjust them manually. So there's many, many presets here, okay? On top of this, you have various voicing. Now this is the precision voicing. Then we have the comfort, then we have the HF presence, high frequency, the wide dispersion, and then we have the studio monitors. So, so these are curves captured from uh, very famous and wildly used studio monitors around the world. We have a QSTA, Main 7, Classic AMT7, Coaxial 3-Ways, Modern White. We kind of know what these are based on the uh, name, a black entry level 5, white 80s, white 90s, these are probably based on the old NS10s, P Mastering, Pro STD, three ways. And of course you can see the responses are never linear, okay? Even for mastering speakers like this, I mean, look at this. Don't be too fixated on the linearity. All that matters uh, in a system is how it translates outside. And that depends also on how we as mix engineer, everybody listen and hear music differently. Without further ado, let's listen to a couple of songs. I'm gonna, of course, start with a couple that I know pretty well. I won't play the songs, I'll just play them, do a comparison, and then come back here and tell you what I think. All right, after about 20 songs and a lot of experimentation with the calibration, with the contour 
function and with the modeling of different monitors, I think I have a good enough idea to tell you what I think. First of all, the low end. The low end of these things is pretty insane. Now, I'm used to have smaller little monitors here uh, in the very near field position, which of course have a smaller driver, but these have an insane low end, not just because of how much and how low they feel, but because the low end that they have is extremely focused. It's not sloppy, it's not slow, which is something I am so picky about. I hate overinflated low end that is slow and sloppy because it never translates outside. And many small compact monitors nowadays, they do have that flaw. Front ported more than rear ported, but still, they do. These don't have that problem. I love the low end. It's not just accurate, but it's pleasant to hear. You can tell is is critical listening. It's, it's not just pretty. So that it's the one thing that impresses me the most about these speakers. Just to give you a reference, the low end of these without any calibration. I'm talking no calibration whatsoever, no correction. Just straight up flat. The low end of these is closer given the differences in size but it's closer to my mains than to the midfield. So these ones, okay? Those are eight inches. The midfield are eight inches. So that tells you uh, they pack more power than the eight inches. Granted, that is a different type of monitor, but just to give you a reference, like don't be afraid of the small compact size of the Precision 6 and think that, oh, maybe they won't give me the low end or enough low end because they 110% do. They give you all the information that you need. Of course, uh, keep in mind that they only go down to 45. And when we say go down to 45, that means with a plus and minus different from the linearity, okay? The lowest frequency I think was 37 or something. So they do extend down there. Problem, so to speak, is that they are not linear below 45. In fact, I think the oscillation goes down to minus 4 dB, so they have a slope. It's not that they they have a wall at 45, so they do extend pretty darn low for the size. Granted that for this test, I have them this close to me, and uh, it, they, should, they should probably be at least uh, as far as the midfield are, or in between where they are now and there, to perform, I think, at their best. But what I notice and I like is that they have no hype as far as a stereo image goes. They have a fairly wide spot. I can move, again, they are so close to each other, but I can move left and right uh, for the entire length of my desk, entire width of my desk, I should say, and not hear, not any particular, any swing at all in the mid-range. Usually, when monitors have poor uh, dispersion, I want to say, and they maybe have uh, that laser focus Twitter. It's always a problem because as soon as you move from the sweet spot, even this much, you will hear a phasey sound. Like while you're moving, you will hear something like this in the high, mid, and mid range. This doesn't happen, right? The Twitter seem to have a great dispersion. The sweet spot is very wide. So this translates in a stereo image that it, it doesn't make the mix pretty. If anything, I want to say, at least in this position, it sounds slightly narrower, which is a good thing. I don't like my monitors making me believe that the mix is wider than it should, because of course, then outside of the studio, it will be narrow, all right? So between the two, if I had to pick uh, which one, I want the monitors to sound a little narrower or a little wider, I would prefer a little narrower. But they have a very accurate stereo image. In fact, you see, I turn on, look, I'm not lying, I turn on my Fusion and I was running a mix. So I was monitoring through it and I started messing around with the image section just to hear how precise I could hear the changes, okay? And I can hear perfectly all the changes, even the, the minute changes on both the stereo width and the space. So that's a good thing. They are able to translate even small changes in the stereo field, which is pretty hard. And again, the closer are the monitor to each other in this position, the harder it is to really 
here critically changes in stereo width. This position, so the mid position there, would be it's already much easier to hear those changes. The phantom image is strong right there, gives me everything that I need to hear. Now, top end and Twitter. I have to say the Twitter is very, very comfortable to listen to. Now, compared to others, it might not give me the amount of detail and extension that I'm used to, even though on paper they do extend to 30 hertz. So it's there. It's not as detailed and critical as other monitors that I'm used to, but at the same time, it's not fatiguing at all. I could listen to these all day for hours on end and it wouldn't fatigue me, which is also something to keep in mind because extremely detailed tweeters, it's a tool that allows you to be extremely precise in your mixing, but if you mix for two, three hours or more, which is the norm, you're gonna lose sensitivity on that range with extremely detailed Twitter. So at the end of the day, which one is better? The other thing that I would say is they are pretty loud. Now, again, I have them so close, but they can definitely go louder than what I would want to hear my mixes at while I'm mixing. So it's definitely more than enough. Of course, they don't have the level of a main speakers or a midfield speakers, but for the size that they have, you will have definitely more volume that you would need or use while mixing. So that's covered. And also as important, maybe more important, they go to that level pretty distortion free. Now on the calibration system, the calibration system was a mixed bag. Of course, I had to compare this with my monitor controller uh, to my other speaker simply because, again, everything here is tuned to the big ones and secondary to uh, the midfield. I needed a hard ABC uh, to understand what the calibration was doing because I didn't know the speakers uh, that well at all, actually, until now. And I say it was a mixed bag because in, on some songs, they definitely benefit of the calibration, especially in the low end. It seemed like in this position, the low end is a lot. And uh, that's why I'm saying compared to the to my midfield, uh, my midfield were more contained on the low end. I was very impressed at the amount of low end that, that came out from these speakers. And again, position is also everything. They should be uh, closer to the wall to benefit from the absorption and the absorption on the other wall and all that. But again, uh, with the calibration, they gained something in the low mid and low end while they were losing on some other song, the very center and the mid range. That came out a little too scooped in some cases and it, it almost made the speaker sound too pretty, which is what I'm always worried about with uh, any type of calibration. You don't want your speaker to sound pretty. You want your speakers, multiple at this point, to give you an overall picture of how your song is gonna translate outside. And that's also why we have multiple speakers, right? You have your main system usually, and then you have another or even better, two more pair of speakers. And at least this is how I use them. Of course, I don't want them all to sound the same, right? That's why we, we pick different speakers. So this is where linearity uh, on paper goes out the window. I need all the different speakers to tell me things the other pair doesn't tell me. In this case, on some songs uh, with the calibration, they were scarily close to my mains and my uh, near field, which are tuned, everything is tuned here for those. So that was great. But on some other songs, I actually prefer them uh, without the calibration, but here's why. Because I'm lucky. I'm lucky to have multiple speakers and I'm used for my very near field, the ones that I had before, to tell me one specific thing. You know, the ones that I had before, they were very low mid heavy. So on certain sounds at a certain point in the mixes, I just switched to those really quickly to check that one spot, uh, which for some reason is more enhanced and more pronounced than on all my other speakers. And if there's too much, I know immediately while i can hear it on the others but i have to like maybe take a break or something like that so on those songs i like the i loud without the calibration and i'm talking about the precision linear calibration because they were performing that task for me they were showing me a little bit of ugliness that wasn't present on my other two pairs and so for that is a great tool and it's a great tool because you can turn it on and off with one click so that's the beauty of it. The beauty of this system is that you can do what I'm doing with multiple pair of speakers with just one pair. And of course you can decide to run 
the speaker emulation like MT7 here or HE3 way with or without the calibration, all right? So make it linear first and then put on top the curve of the speaker. Again, this one was also a mixed bag, although I gotta say using both at times it felt a little bit too processed. Uh, so for example, if I run the calibration with the white 90s or 890s, which is already a, a heavy filter. Uh, if you add a calibration, which is another fairly heavy filter in this case, because again, we did a quick calibration, we did a quick measurement, it's quite a lot of processing. And I noticed that when you combine both, it might sound a little too processed. So in my opinion, I mean, every room is different, but try without the calibration when you wanna run a, an emulation of another speaker. But this is a great system because of that, because you have so many different references. Now, here's an advice that I give you. Try to pick two or three, no more, speaker emulations if you want to use the function, which is useful, and not 10. Because if you do that, it's going to be a mess. You're going to start hearing weird things on each and every emulation, and you are probably going to over-process your mix and I, this is just my advice. First of all, learn the speakers in your room as they are, then run the calibration, see if it improves. And then if you want to have the different perspectives for different speakers, don't pick more than three. You will see that if you are consistent with those and you learn those few, three is just a number. It could be two, could be four, but you, you get what I mean your mixes are gonna be better. And one thing that I didn't mention is you don't only have the studio monitors, but you also have the Hi-Fi profile. So for example, Hi-Fi BMW Bookshelf 6, which we all know what uh, kind of speakers they are. And there's also multimedia. So you have a 49 inch TV, portable P uh, Bluetooth speakers and a smartphone, which are incredibly accurate, I gotta say. Uh, the smartphone really sound pretty much like a smartphone. I think that's those are more useful for you to check than the emulations of the various studio monitors. That's just my personal opinion. I think that, uh, especially the multimedia, so the Bluetooth speakers, TV, and, um, and smartphone curves, you can see them in the screen. I don't have the screen capture right now, but um, you get the idea. They are probably more useful for you to have that completely different perspective than the various studio monitors. In conclusion, I think these are excellent monitors, even just without all the software. I think the calibration system can help. The X monitor as a software is pretty darn amazing, especially again for those simulation. But regardless, if you just buy the speakers, hook them up, and just mix on them as they are. I think they are remarkable speakers. I'm not sure about the price of these things, but I'm pretty sure they're pretty affordable. Kudos to AK Multimedia. There was a lot of hype around the iLoud series. Again, even my friend Tom Lord Algy told me to check them out and, uh, and they were right. These speakers definitely deliver. Don't be worried about the size of a 6.5 inch speakers for low end or bigness or extensions. These things have more than enough, I promise you that. And in the line, they also have a five inch speaker, I think, and a MTM, so the three ways, I think. And uh, maybe they'll send them. We'll take a look at those as well. We'll do a comparison. If you're interested in seeing that, tell IK Multimedia. Let me know in the comments down below. The link to the iLoud Precision 6 is gonna be in the info box down below. If you like this video, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, use a super thanks, support the channel, click the join button to access the exclusive content. Stay safe. See you next time. Hands on my neck, hands get my throat, throat. Lift me up, up, man, take control. Oh.